<laughs> I'm record, you get slides. So, <laughs> oh, there, yay. Awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, as with any professional development, we will follow our norms. Thank you for being committed to your students and your learning and being here. Um, be responsible for maximizing your learning. Uh, one way we'd like you to do that is just make sure all of your questions get answered. Be respectful and take care of your needs. We will be giving away some prizes um, at the end. My friend Lee's got some prizes to give away. So thanks for joining us and look forward to giving some prizes. Uh oh, I don't know how to go backwards. You just have to talk. About <laughs> okay, that. the slide that went really fast is just a specific norm for our video uh, professional development. If you'd make sure, and I believe you all have muted your mics, if you don't mind sharing your screen so we can see your faces, that helps us. Um, but if you are not comfortable, that's fine too. Uh, we will, like I said, want to make sure we get all your questions answered. So if you've got your screen on, you can just raise your hand and give us a wave and we'll try to answer questions that way. Or um, you can just do the little under more, you can do the hand raising um, emoji down there and that will let us know to answer your question. Or you can also drop it in the chat. But Everything we do in Canyons comes back to our framework or MTSS framework. Today, we're specifically focusing on uh, the highlight of Unit 5, which is systematic vocabulary, which has a um, effect size of 0.67, which is about, which is more than a year and a half's growth. So if you, if you frequently routinely use systematic vocabulary routines in your classroom, your kids are going to grow an extra half of a year in one year. So we're really excited that uh, the letters and the wonders and the 95% group kind of all work together to increase that use of vocabulary in your classroom. All right, uh, just a reminder, continuing education credits and stipend for each of these units, you get one USBE credit from the state which is um, equivalent to one point on our lane change. And remember in Canyons now every like 20 hours you can apply for another lane change credit. Um, and also you get for each of the units, the $400 stipend. More information will be coming very soon about university credits. We are partnering with UVU and SUU to offer university credits which are good if you ever wanted to move out of state and those USBE credits wouldn't transfer. Or if you are thinking of doing a master's degree, you could get up to 12 credit hours for our eight units of uh, letters study. More information will be coming about that soon though. I'm waiting for final approval from the universities. All right, and this is the first of our letters series of bite-sized PD. We will be doing one more for each of the other units as well as redoing the toolbox for our new teachers, but there are lots of other topics. So check out the bite-sized PD schedule, see if anything else would help you. And I think these are um, something to that you can not only get your letters information from, but when you go into the Canvas bite-sized class, there, is, there are a ton of categories, letters being one of them. But if you're looking for um, all kinds of like technology support or behavioral supports, anything, um, there's quite a plethora of um, opportunities for you to um, look at those. And th this and all the other letters PDs are archived there. So you can always go back if there's something that you're like, oh, I heard some about that, but I don't know where. This is where you can go to go back and all, that's why we're recording this meeting. So you can go back and you can listen to it as many times as you want. <laughs> so um, the bridge to practice is part of letters that has been very challenging for um, a lot of people, and it is it is a lot of work, and it's hard. 
And what we in Canyons know is that um, the bridge to practice is kind of where the rubber hits the road. That's where you're changing your routines and implementing the knowledge that you gain through letters um, will be, it'll show in your student outcomes and improve student achievement. So it's critical that um, you, you do these because that's, that's what matters. We know you already know how to read. They're the ones that need that, that experience and that practice. So um, what we have done is taken the assignments from letters and then put them into the Canvas class for letters and modified and simplified the assignments to make them much more manageable for teachers. So instead of answer all these questions for student one, and then answer all these questions for student two and three, you choose your case study students, and then you do the questions and reflect on them. And what we're really looking for is the difference in how the kids respond to your instruction. It's much less about, um, you know, the lesson went fine, everybody got it, it was good. But, you know, Joey struggled and I had to do this additional scaffold before, but, you know, Bethany got it really fast. So I know I'm going to have to plan in some additional things for her. So those are the kinds of things um, that we want you to be thinking about because you knowing it is one thing, but you actually doing it with your kids is what's going to change the student outcomes for them, right? Are there any questions about any of this so far? Okay, you can unmute yourselves and just like join us. <laughs> All right, so our agenda for today is uh, we are going to, to go over the content for unit for volume two. And then we're gonna look at the worksheets for unit five. We're going to talk briefly about the observation forms that we will be using as we do the observation walkthroughs this year. And then we'll have a, a chance for you to ask any questions and hopefully we will have all those answers for you. Um, something that's really exciting this year um, is the, the content. For me, it's really great. And I think it's going to, it marries beautifully with what we know and are expected and how we're expected to teach within Wonders. Um, unit five is focusing on, like we said, the oral language and vocabulary. Unit six is all about reading comprehension. Seven is text-driven comprehension instruction. So teaching them how to read different kinds of texts. And there are a ton of graphic organizers that you can use for scaffolding for that reading in the back of your letters manual. In the resources section, there's a bunch of them. And you can also then use those graphic organizers as the jumping off point for structuring the writing response, which comes in unit eight. So you, they're much more complex um, skills. So in kids will really struggle with these upper level thinking skills if they don't have those basic foundational reading skills. Um, so that's, that's the content for volume two. And so here we go. This is me, right, Les? Okay. Yep. All right. So for today, our learning intention and success criteria um, is I am learning how vocabulary, back, background knowledge, and oral language support reading and writing proficiency so I can teach these skills effectively. And our success criteria for today is I will know I'm successful when I plan activities that contribute to a language-rich classroom where all students can be successful. And you'll notice um, the Wiser logo is up in the upper right-hand corner of the slide. And we have engineered the learning intention and success criteria with those Wiser visual cues to scaffold them for all of us. 
So it's just an extra way to, to reach out and look through that lens, that wiser lens that we learn about on district day um, in order to make all the content completely accessible for everyone. Questions about that? Okay. All right, so on to the unit five bridge to practice uh, assignments or reflections. Session one is why is vocabulary so important? What you're asked to do for this is download the appropriate language checklist. So either the K-1 checklist or the second, third grade checklist. And once you have the checklist, take a look at it and then teach one of your wonders lessons. For this one, you don't have to plan anything else, just teach a lesson. But as you're going, try to pay attention to how your three case study students are using language in the lesson. And then at the end of the lesson, go back and reflect for each of your three kids, how did they use the vocabulary? Did they use the vocabulary of the lesson? Did they avoid using the vocabulary of the lesson? Um, what can you learn from just teaching that lesson about their vocabulary usage? So that's something we're really excited about with um, units five through eight is they really align with wonders and 95% group. And uh, there are a lot fewer instances of you having to plan something else. For the most part, it really will be just teach and then reflect. So this is a great example of just teach your wonders lesson and then reflect on how they did using that checklist. Um, Leslie, I have a question. Yeah. Yep. So um, I don't remember, mm -hmm. but was the, I don't remember wonders being in the directions that are on letters nope it's not it's it says like plan a lesson a reading lesson and but we don't want you to plan another reading lesson we want you to just teach your reading lesson um and reflect on it it wasn't directly in theirs uh we just took the reflection part uh, and but i reflect. don't even remember it saying plan a reading lesson i think it said plan a lesson yes or something like that. Cause I know there's a couple of people in the building that have already done theirs. Uh -huh. I don't know if they submitted it yet, but it wasn't for this. I know that I did one, but I didn't do it using a wonders lesson. Oh. I did it using a morning meeting. Oh, and that would be great. I also too. did it for a math lesson. Yeah. Or math lessons. I think anytime they should be using vocabulary that you've taught them, or that's part of the academic vocabulary, so a math lesson would be great because there would be math okay. specific academic vocabulary, a morning meeting, there would be um, relationship yeah. vocabulary right. okay. that you've taught them. So that's a great question. Thank you, Tanya. No, it really, it is teach any lesson. Okay. So perfect. Thanks for clarifying that for everyone. Okay. Number two is a discussion uh, for this discussion. Present your reading and again, wonders or any other reading that you might be doing in your day, do your reading, but use some of the uh, reading techniques with your, um, that are in this unit. So in unit two, it has some specific reading routines and you can do them through whole group as part of your wonders lesson, or you can do them a uh, small group with just those kiddos that you're following. And after you've tried a couple of those activities that are in that session, so again, you're not like creating the activities, you're just going to try a couple that are in the session. So what you're going to do is decide where in your day you're going to try them. And then you're going to have a discussion where you talk about how it went, how your three kids responded, what worked, and if you would use those activities again, or if you might alter them a little bit. So We've done lots of discussions, so this is just one, try a couple of those activities. And I think something to keep in mind at this time in the year in connection with this is because we're still teaching and reinforcing routines and procedures in our classroom, and that takes time away from our actual instruction time, um, eventually we'll get that time back. But for now, 
you may not be able to get through an entire book. So it may be a question of reading half of a book today and half tomorrow or reading a paragraph even to get an idea for, you know, having the discussion and how it went. So you don't have to necessarily read an entire book. Or right? it could be your daily read. Yeah. Right. All right. So in session three, um, it, it's talking about which words to actually teach explicitly. So the difference between tier two words and tier three words, tier three words are specific to a very content oriented area. Like in biology, there are certain words that you'll use that you wouldn't necessarily see in wide reading of, you know, just general literature. So um, it talks about how to choose words from tier two and tier three and which ones you need to teach explicitly. So you will look at the, the worksheets. There's one for tier two words and there's one for tier three words. And it talks about um, which ones you will need to teach more explicitly. And there is an exemplar of this assignment that's been completed for you. So you can click on that when, you, when you're in the Canvas class and check out the exemplar that will give you ideas of how to, how to kind of think about doing this assignment, okay? Can I just add for that really quick? Please. I would just take those vocabulary words too from one of your lessons in the day. So from your wonders today or from your math lesson, which ones do you need to teach explicitly or which ones not? So don't plan specific words or don't look for a work word list. Just take them out of your, what you're doing that day. Right. Oh, sorry, this is me. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> how should new words be introduced? Um, so again, you're going to choose three words from your wonders, from your 95%, from, you know, math, can be science, social studies, whatever, wherever they're coming from. And you're going to choose three. You are going to use the routine to introduce them. And you'll notice the routine is very, very close to the one that has been in our instructional guides for years, because we know this is the best instructional routine. And the, the people who developed this routine and who wrote wonders are all in cahoots. So um, it's a very, very well done, very high effect size routine. And again, it connects to the wiser uh, lens for planning. So think about your students and what scaffolding certain students might need or what, how you can scaffold those words for them. They might come from a low language kind of environment. So those are the kinds of considerations that you're going to want to think through as you plan this lesson. And you, after you choose which words, you're going to teach them this way and then figure out how it went and what, how you want to maybe improve it for next time. Make sense? All righty. All right, session five uh, is just kind of reflecting on the last lesson, which activities did you choose? How did they work? Or you could choose to implement a couple different because this session also introduces a couple of other vocabulary activities. So pick a couple new vo vocabulary activities to do with your students. Uh, again, whole class or small group. And how did they go? How did those three kids respond? Uh, did it take some longer? Did some need more scaffolding? Uh, there are a lot of different activities in the book, but also uh, you could find others that relate and just try them out with the kids and see what works for each kid. And that's what unit what session five asks you to do. And the last one, that's another great thing about this year is that instead of eight sessions, there are only six. So the last one for... <laughs> Unit five is how is a language rich classroom created? And we thought since we were asking you to use language that a discussion would be a good way to uh, 
have that reflection. So for the discussion, just what are you doing to create a language rich classroom? What routines and procedures do you have in place? When during your day do you have the kids talk? Uh, do you use scaffolds? Do you use stems? Uh, do you, is it just around collaborative conversations in wonders? Is it in morning meetings? So just talk about all the different times you're using a language rich, rich classroom and then how your case study students do with that oral language and with that discussion. And with any of our discussions, we ask you to do your original prompt that has your reflection and then also to get the benefit of a discussion, uh, read some of your peers and offer some comments. On district day, we practice the give one, get one strategy. And this is kind of what we're hoping for from the discussion too, is that maybe you'll hear uh, somebody else's ideas for how they bring language or discussions in and get some ideas from what they're doing or they'll get ideas from what you're doing. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the observations and we will be coming through again. Um, and the, the purpose of the observations honestly is not to check on you, it's to check on us. So it is information for us as to what we need to, to revisit, what we need to teach better, what we need to dive more deeply into. So it's, it's really um, collecting that information for us as a district so that we can do better when we see there's a need for some kind of um, knowledge to be shared or, or enhanced. So um, there are, we'll be doing two different observations each time we come. The one is this one, which is the general classroom atmosphere. And you can see the things in there are things like wait time, feedback, your goals. Do you spiral back again? The enthusiasm, the scaffolds that you've used in your instruction. So it's just really the classroom feeling and, and the atmosphere. And we'll do that one each time. Then for unit five, there is a specific vocabulary um, checklist. And that one has to do specifically with teaching the vocabulary. So it's which words did you select, the oral language modeling, things like your pacing, um, the use of context, environmental language. And so it, it gives, gives us an opportunity to really zoom in on the content of unit five in addition to the general classroom. So we'll be doing these. And then um, what, we, what we did with the, the walkthrough data last year was so fun. We we were we used, as you well know, we used the um, the foundations checklist each time, and we were able to compile the data for each of the units using that checklist. And then we were able to compare the implementation rate and how many things we checked off in unit one that we observed and how many things we were able to check off that list in unit four. And it was phenomenal how much growth there was in oh, our teachers and the implementation know. rate. I, I refer to most of the teacher, teachers, I guess. Oh. It was so cool. It was really, um, it, it was just, it was, it was, it was impressive. And CEA thought it was impressive too, because we were able to <laughs> share that data with them and they were thrilled. They, they were just thrilled. So, um, so these are what we will be using. There's a different checklist for each of the units, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, and actually we don't even know what we're going to use for eight yet. So we'll let you know that, but we don't want it to be a secret. There is a link to all of those observations um, in that beginning slide of this slideshow. So you will have access to that through the Bite Size Canvas class after we get it uploaded. Okay, questions about the observations? Lee, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, well, I guess Lee and Leslie. So am I understanding correctly, 
We're going to do the observations from the letters program for units five through eight. Mm -hmm. But for teachers that are starting one through four, we're going to still use the foundations walkthrough from last year. Yep, that is correct, though. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Does anybody else have any questions, suggestions, feedback? Anything? Was it helpful? Yeah, it is helpful because it kind of just gives you a preview. Like I, while you were um, talking, I printed, there wasn't really much to print for my team. Like this feels like the only thing we might need. Yeah. From the very first one and yep. whatever you're going to add link wise when we're done with this, right? That other yeah. checklist. Okay. Yep. That's good to know. And your coaches in your buildings have all of the observation checklists. So you can, they were shared with the coaches in their um, coaches meeting last week or yeah, okay. I think it was last week. So you can ask your coach for any of those that you want. Right, Angela? I will find it. <laughs> I think we link, linked it in the agenda from your coaching meeting last week. I think week. so too. But you know how sometimes you get a lot of information and you're like, I don't need that just yet. So I'm not... <laughs> using brain power on it, that's where I am right now. <laughs> yeah. But I will have it when somebody's ready for it, I will have it. Yeah, awesome. we, don't, we don't want those to um, feel threatening or icky in any way. We wanna be very clear about what it is that we're using and um, how we're using it and why we're using it. And um, so it's it's not not intended to be any kind of a, uh, an evaluation or a judgment or a, none of that. It is, it's all strictly information and feedback for us on our training and where we need to go deeper. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. Tune in next week for another exciting episode of Bite Size PD. <laughs> all right. Bye everybody. Bye everyone.